Thank you, Lydia. Um, uh, I will start uh, answering your, your question. Why uh, Ongawa is working on uh, partnerships? It started uh, five years ago, uh, a little bit more than uh, five years, um, negotiating with a Spanish uh, international cooperation agency to 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 start working on uh, on partnership, and they were looking for the ideal um, ideal candidate to uh, to work on this and to help them. Uh, starting piloting some uh, some different uh, some different ways of involving uh, mainly the private sector into the development cooperation uh, projects. Um, I do believe that Ongawa is the right candidate because of the of the historic uh, relationship we have with uh, with the private sector, um, but also the um, maybe the no risky way we understood the proposal from uh, from AAC at the beginning, because it was very new for Spanish um, environment in cooperation. It was very new also for Ongawa. And it's, uh, it was a little bit tricky to start uh, getting involved in too much risky uh, processes. So at the same time, uh, we wanted to be a little bit risky, but not so much. And that's why sometimes the results we have been reaching in the last, uh, in the last five years were not maybe the one we, we were hoping so. But at the same time, it gave us uh, a legitimacy to work with different entities on uh, on the field, um, we we've been uh, working on methodolo methodological and innovation uh, on a technolo technological level um, partnerships. Some of them were directly uh, thought and mentioned as uh, PPPDs. Other were like more multi-stakeholder uh, partnerships. Um, and uh, we've been uh, developing these uh, partnerships in, uh, in uh, four different countries, uh, in uh, Nicaragua, in Mozambique, in Peru, and uh, a little bit in, uh, in Senegal uh, two years ago. All of them are very different uh, partnerships, but also very different uh, level of um, involvement of the, com of the um, private sector and other entities. For example, in Mozambique, in north of the country, we've been working on a local economical uh, development with specifically um, local institutions, local administration, and very, very uh, small local um, private sector. Um, in south of the country, we've been working with other kind of factors, and this may be the, um, the only one I would really uh, call PPPD. Uh, in Manisa, in south of the, uh, in south of Mozambique, working on uh, water and sanitation management, um, where we've been involving uh, so many actors. I think I will talk um, mainly of this uh, this uh, partnerships uh, because I think it's the one who gives uh, the most uh, important um, lessons uh, on uh, on the way to deal with partners and to deal with diversity and so on, a lot of stuff uh, that, uh, that have been mentioned before by, uh, by the other companies. Um, in Peru, we are right now working, uh, based on the AEC protocol uh, for partnerships, we are working on uh, a partnerships for developing a technological um, solution for uh, monitoring um, dengue. And uh, this option could have a replicability and maybe a scaling up uh, for, uh, for other countries or other region and other problems. And uh, finally, in Nicaragua, we've been dealing with uh, techn technological innovation on water and uh, sanitation, but mainly sanitation, looking for um, an improvement on sanitation, uh, ecolo ecological sanitation problem. Um, on uh, in Hinotega area. Um, before starting the, the the debate, we've been talking with uh, with all of us, and I, I, I was surprised because of the point of view of each one. I think it's going to be interesting be after the after the presentation with a question because um, we are defending uh, here uh, a way of doing things. Uh, I think we are too much looking at uh, the tool and not so much to the results we are mm, looking uh, looking at. 
Um, I would say that partnerships are a good tool, and uh, it's obvious that uh, the lack of funding, the lack of um, possibilities to reach very marginalized um, areas and so on is is clear. Everybody is uh, is um, is aware of this, and everybody, I think, is um, is going to agree that we need. Uh, a lot of people working on this to uh, to make it uh, to make it better and to uh, improve the impacts we are having in uh, in South Country. But at the same time, I'm not sure that we should um, be so um, focused on the tool because I, uh, I think that sometimes uh, it was my case five years ago when we started the program with the ACID, I was um, I, I used to say that. It was an atypical um, project because we were uh, piloting and uh, experimenting ways of doing things, but not changing the, the objectives of the, um, of the process. And uh, with the time, I, I, I discovered that finally we, we were too much um, uh, focused on the tool. And the tool can be good or can be wrong. Uh, it depends a lot of uh, the circumstances, the sectors, the area, the kind of beneficiaries we are looking at, and so on. So, um, and it's even even more. I, I do believe that in some concrete, uh, specific uh, context, the partnerships uh, is not the uh, is not a solution. It's maybe um, even more. It can it can be a barrier to uh, to go on and to progress on um, on the solution that we are looking for because we might um, forget what is our objective, talking too much about the tool. Um, I do think that uh, partnerships can be um, a complement to other way of uh, working on development, but maybe not sure that uh, it must be substitutive. And sometimes I have the sensation that uh, the debate is uh, leading us to this kind of, um, of uh, point of view. Um, and um, and also talking about scalability and uh, replicability, I, I would say that uh, hopefully a lot of things we have been doing in the last 20, 30, 40 years, 40 years in, uh, in development are replicable and uh, can be applied on different contexts. I will I will say that, for example, what we're doing in uh, in Manisa, in south of Mozambique, can be replicated replicated in a lot of places in water and sanitation in other uh, sectors. But um, um, the scalability is uh, something that I'm not sure we should introduce when we are talking about uh, development. So um, I, I do believe that some people in, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the debate is uh, sharing the same, uh, same point of view, so we can discuss about it later. But um, the practical uh, partnerships we developed uh, showed us that every context is different, every entity involved in the um, partnership is different, even the same uh, entity in two different contexts is going to have a different objective to, to reach with, um, with uh, the partnership. And um, I, I think that um, we, we have to to be very flexible in this kind of, uh, of uh, operations. So the, um, the last five, I would say the last three years uh, made me move from uh, believing that PPPDs were the solution and were optimum uh, to think about PPPDs not maybe the solution. Maybe the solution should be multi-stakeholder uh, partnerships. Let's do not call them PPPD because we block ourselves into a uh, into two, um, two limits that uh, are breaking precisely the, um, the flexibility. They are also breaking the innovation we should introduce in this kind of uh, approach. And, um, and also that uh, taking uh, advantage of some of uh, the things that have been told here, I, I, I did a list of um, positive and negative uh, things and I have too much negative things for the PPPDs. So I try to transform them into positive and say, okay, we can, uh, we can have balance, but uh, it, was not very, uh, it was not very reasonable. Uh, I, 
we are talking about transparency. We are talking that uh, all the um, all the partners uh, should be should trust each other. I think that we are trying to build something that is nearly impossible. is It's too much. Uh, it will it will be nice, but it's very difficult to be uh, on a transparent um, on a transparent par partnership uh, to make. Everybody agrees the same result for the for the partnership. Make uh, to deal with a, a long-term compromise with all of them. I, I mean that in Mozambique, for example, we've seen that some of the partners have the same vision than us and have a long-term uh, compromise with uh, with the issue we are dealing with. Some others have a very very short-term uh, compromise. So we've decided to include them in the in the partnership because they do uh, get uh, into the partnership um, some knowledge that we need to solve the problem. But that doesn't mean that we should make them compromise themselves up to five, six years. They are okay for doing it for seven months, so that's fine. So they, they are involved in the, in the project. Uh, Ken was talking about how to deal with how to, how to deal with uh, diversity. Uh, it was one of the points. I think too much diversity is too much problem. And uh, how to deal with the diversity, I think we cannot deal it uh, properly with diversity. We have just to adapt ourselves and to make sure that the other entities around us are understanding the way we understand the problem and the way we want to solve the problem. Because it's going to be different. Uh, the approach we are going to have as an NGO, as a public administration, or, uh, or as a private company, which has or no have um, commercial interest in the country or in the in the area we are talking about, and so on. Um, so, finally, I, I think that um, I, I, I was not sure with the time if it's because I'm French and uh, we used to uh, to be against everything and we always uh, hungry and so on and so on and so on. Um, I, I was not sure if it was because of that or because uh, the time showed me that uh, PPPD can be a solution sometimes. Uh, partnerships tool is interesting and should be, uh, should be developed, but um, on a very flexible way. A flexible way means uh, not too much process and uh, not too much um, limitation for each uh, partners because sometimes and it was the case with uh, some m mostly private uh, companies that they get discouraged because of the steps you want to to make them uh, to give um, so the time makes me move from PPPDs to multi stakeholder uh, partnerships I think this is uh, a good solution might be not the best one, uh, but at least um, it's working better than uh, a PPPD. At least in the in the cases we've uh, we've seen on the on the field, and um, also thinking about something that um, Ken uh, mentioned before, it's PPPD may, might be like an unnatural arrangement, and uh, I do think so. Uh, in fact, in some cases, uh, in Nicaragua and uh, in Mozambique, we've seen that it was working, and we will be able to call it PPPD because it was there was previously a natural arrangement, and we just changed it uh, on a PPPD context. But we did not force uh, the, um, the the partnership through an MOU that was. Um, blocking the partners be, be between them and so on. Um, I hope I transmitted my uh, my ideas because I made the, the notes in Spanish. I've been asked to do it in English, and I'm spending too much time talking in French. So it's like uh, uh, an explosive mixture. But anyway, so I, I think now the debate can be uh, can be interesting because we have certainly different uh, different points of view. But also, I'm happy to see. That can is maybe not sure that it is a good solution. So um, it's not because only by my passport. It's maybe <laughs> also because of the of the things we've seen uh, in the field and uh, seeing that uh, it's not always so easy or so so practical as uh, as we as we think. And also, I I would say uh, as a conclusion that 
to talk too much about the PPD to uh, try to make good uh, storytelling, uh, good marketing and so on, um, make us going away from our uh, main objective, which is get um, very marginalized uh, areas, very poor people and so on. I I've seen in uh, one of the slides of, uh, from Jody that are uh, private companies able to reach very marginalized uh, areas? I I'm not sure of it. I'm, uh, I do think that it's just in between, but very, very poor, very, very marginalized. I I'm not sure that we are, we are able to, to reach them. 